Hey, Tanaya. Hi. <laughs> so, before we get into it, I do want to hit you with an icebreaker. So, what's a good TV show recommendation you would give to myself or our audience? Um, I would say Top Boy. Okay, what's that about? It's basically about these British kids that are growing up in poverty mm -hmm. and they basically just have to sell drugs to get out of poverty. Yeah, but okay. it's, it's like a thriller. I like mm -hmm. it and I love their accents, so okay. <laughs> I recommend it for sure. Would you say you have a good British accent? Definitely, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ready to pull it out on site. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Tanaya, can you give us just a little bit of background on your experiences with projections from other people growing up? Yeah, so I would say it all started when I moved to Florida. Mm -hmm. I was around 10 years old and I was the only black girl in my class and Florida is really, really hot. So I got really chocolate <laughs> <laughs> and people would just call me names and they would make fun of me for the way that I talked. Mm -hmm. um, when you're black and you're a woman growing up, they just expect you to be a specific way and loud and just not nice. And yeah. I didn't know how to truly be myself. And they would say I looked like a werewolf when I wore my hair in my, its natural state. Mm -hmm. And it was just a really tough time for me. And I was also going through an identity crisis at that time. Mm -hmm. So I was just like, why am I black? Why am I different from everyone else? Why do I look this way? Why do I talk this way? Mm -hmm. And ugh, I don't blame my parents for moving me to Florida, but I just wish I had maybe talk to them about that more. Yeah. Um, but it was a really rough, rough time for me mm -hmm. because I was never really boisterous. I would always let them say anything they wanted to me. Mm -hmm. And it definitely affected me up until high school, mm -hmm. I would say. I never really stood up for myself. I was always quiet, I was always timid. And growing up in the area that I lived into, my accent would change like based on where I was living. So oh, yeah. they were just like, why do you talk like that? You talk so white. Mm -hmm. And I'd just be like, what do you want me to sound like? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like sometimes I do have an accent. It depends on who I'm around. Right. And like I grew up in Baltimore. You would never think okay, that. <laughs> you would never <laughs> think that, but we were just so rude to you. Mm -hmm. and really judgmental when you're quiet and I never understood why right and would you say you were also quiet the same way in your family or like within the household did you experience mm -hmm. any of these same treatments or projections maybe in the way that I wanted to like express myself like the clothes I would want to wear maybe like if I wanted to wear my hair like I said in the afro mm -hmm. um I would just get criticized for that, which was weird. Yeah. And my mom would be like, oh, why don't you put some product in your hair? Oh, it looks a little dry. Like, oh. it doesn't look that neat like that. And mm -hmm. she would want me to get my hair straightened sometimes, and I hated my hair straight. Mm -hmm. But I had my hair straight when I was living in Florida. Mm -hmm. And I remember this black girl came up to me, and she was like, is that your real hair? Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah. And she was like, no, it's not. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, what? Why, why would can't I be? <laughs> like, I'm literally in eighth grade, and you're saying that my hair is fake. Like, why mm -hmm. would I have weird fake hair? But, um, definitely being in a black household, like, you can't really win. It's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you want me to do? Yeah. Like, what I'm trying to come into my own. I'm mm -hmm. trying to explore with things. And you want me to be like exactly how you grew up or exactly how you want me to present myself to you. Right. So yeah, definitely in the household. Mm -hmm. And in your friend group or circle of friends, I know you say you were really quiet growing up and mm -hmm. kind of stayed to yourself. It does give me the sense of like introverted vibes, but you know what you want to do with yourself. It's just getting other people to see that. Yeah. Did you have any friends around you that supported your differences or supported you in times where people would say, you know, hey, your hair looks unkept or you mm -hmm. look a little masculine because of this? Right. Um, when I was living in Florida, I just had like a lot of Hispanic friends. So they obviously didn't like understand where I was coming from. They would just tell me to like brush it off Mm -hmm. and everything, but they wouldn't really like stand up for me. But when I started high school, I had like a good group of friends, but 
the bullying only happened like in the classroom and they weren't in those classes with me yeah. so i was just alone alone <laughs> i was just alone i wouldn't say anything i would get looks people would just like stare at me and i would just like look away mm -hmm. and i think me being quiet made them think that I was like afraid of them. Yeah. When in all actuality, I'm just like having anxiety. It's mm -hmm. like, like, please, why are you looking at me? I don't know what you want me to say. Yeah. So, yeah. That is so relatable. Mm -hmm. So when we think of examples, what would you say your mother specifically has taught you about femininity? My mom taught me that a lady is supposed to be classy, always look pretty all the time. Um, always be kept, uh, to never swear. Um, how would you say you were able to apply some of those rules, if at all, to your life? Mm, I would say I take a lot of pride in how I look now, but when I was younger, I didn't really care. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm still like a little low maintenance now, but there's times where I would just go to the supermarket and I'm like, I'm trying to look like the baddest one there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so definitely, I, I took a lot from that. Mm -hmm. So based on what you've already shared with me, and I thank you for your vulnerability, it seems as though you grew up faced with the awkward black girl syndrome, yeah. rather. Um, and just to get to know you more personally, how was that phase or transition of growing into your womanhood, transitioning from being the awkward black girl? Yeah, so I'm still very much an awkward black girl. Mm -hmm. um, growing up and being around my family, they're very, very loud. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was always really, really quiet. And they would just be like, why don't you open up more? Or go play with your cousins or they were just very pushy judgmental, right? yeah, judgmental mm -hmm. and pushy about literally everything I did. And it didn't help, especially when I went to school because I was very quiet. Yeah. <laughs> and I started making a lot of friends in high school and mm -hmm. up to college. And right now I'm very much comfortable with who I am. Mm -hmm. And I thank myself, honestly, mm -hmm. for just being that awkward black girl and being okay with that and not letting anyone make fun of me for that or take it as a compliment, right. really. Like, oh, I'm weird, thank you. Yeah. I don't wanna be normal. <laughs> exactly, I love that for you. And then thinking of how you've embraced that um, awkwardness mm -hmm. today, what are three words that would positively describe how you feel about being the awkward black girl? Mm. I would say amazing, mm -hmm, definitely. Um, joyful, mm -hmm. and outstanding. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Is there anything specific, like a specific mm -hmm. trait or something that you might say that makes you feel more joyful than mm -hmm. anyone else or like anything else could? Mm -hmm. Growing up, I was very much how I am now, very awkward, and I would always smile a lot, and people would always be like, are you on drugs? Why are you so happy all the time? Yeah, literally. No drugs. I would be, yeah, I'd be like, what do y'all mean? Like, I'm just happy to be alive, so I chose joyful for mm -hmm. that. That definitely describes me. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, of the two of your parents, which would you say you look like the most? I would say my mom. Okay. I would say my mom. I have some of my dad's features, but overall, I think I look like my mom. I think I have her smile. Mm -hmm. I think I have her nose. Mm -hmm. I would say I think I have my dad's eyes, but that's about it. Okay. Yeah. So have you battled any contrary beliefs about you looking more like your mom within your family or just from anyone else outside of your family? All the time. What are some comments <laughs> you would hear about your parents? Um, I will always get comments from my cousins like, oh, you look just like your dad. And mm -hmm. knowing like I didn't have that mm -hmm. like relationship with him, yeah. I always took it very negatively. Yeah. And it also made me feel bad about myself because I'm like, why are you saying that mm -hmm. I look more like my dad when I look just like my mom? Like, yeah. I don't see the resemblance mm -hmm. at all. And it really angers me probably mm -hmm. because we don't have that relationship right but it's also sort of rude 
because yeah, I'm trying to come into my femininity and everything, and you're saying that I look like my dad. Mm -hmm. Like, it's yeah. disrespectful. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you have yourself on a pedestal, and you know how you see yourself. And mm -hmm. like you said, you feel like you look more like your mom. That's more than just the feeling, but the traits are there too. Mm -hmm. And to have someone kind of just knock you back down exactly. off of that, like, no, you're going to look like this because I say you do. Right. It is demeaning, and it does feel degrading. So we know how the beauty standards are of today, but what's some advice that you would give all other awkward black girls out there? I love every black awkward girl. I'm also a black awkward girl. We're in this together. Be yourself, and I mean that with everything that I say. Be yourself. We're in this together, baby!